talked about the wind on a small scale, but now we're going to look at it on a really large scale, the scale of the Earth. Now, here's the Earth. <laughs> and, well, it's not actually the Earth. It's a globe, but I think you knew that. Yes. <laughs> so, and it, we have it hanging here from the ceiling. Now, where is it hot on the Earth? What part of the Earth is it warm? The equator. The equator. Yeah. Very, very toasty here. And it's cold. Where is it cold on the Earth? Ooh, North and South Pole. North and South Pole. So it's cold up there, and it's hot up here. Now, we talked about in the last section, if you have a hot place, the Earth's going to go up. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to travel to where it's cold, and then it's going to sink. So mm -hmm. you might expect the wind to just go from where it's hot, and then sink where it's cold, but there's a problem. Because in addition to having the Earth having a force from that heating, mm -hmm. the Earth is doing something else. The Earth is spinning. It is spinning. And because of the fact that it's spinning, the Earth can't just rise here and go down there. There's some other mm -hmm. forces that are at work. And that's what we want to take a look at in this section, is what happens when you spin things. You get some extra forces. And I'm going to put some dry ice in. Now, we worked with the dry ice before, and wow. that's our frozen carbon dioxide. And then, if I fill this up, with a little bit of water, what it's going to do, well, you tell me what it does. For one thing, it makes a great noise. Yes, I like it. that's weird. And I put in a little bit of water, and what do we get in the bottom? Fog. Oh, but look as the fog goes, look at it swirl. It's swirling round and round. And as it swirls, it kind of, you see how we get like little, little cyclones that yeah. form because of the fact that you spin it. That cold air is trying to get, it gets pushed out as it comes off that block, but then it swirls. That is That's so exactly cool. what hurricanes do. Exactly, exactly. And why do, why do hurricanes spin? Because? The globe. The globe spins, because the globe spins, and that causes the air to develop this little cyclone motion that we have right here. Ooh, that's very nice. <laughs> now, you've each got on the front of you here, on the table, there's little spinning globes. And if you take those and give them a spin, go ahead and give them a spin, and then look at the swirls. You can see in the center, we got a band here, right? Mm -hmm. This band where it's nice and smooth. And then there's a band where it's like kind of stormy. Uh -huh. And then we got like a seriously stormy thing going on up top. Oh, yeah, look, a totally smooth band at the side. Uh -huh. So what's happening is because of the spinning, the motion is naturally breaking itself into bands. We've got a band here, we have a band here where something's happening, and a band there at the top where something's happening. And that banded structure is something you see in the Earth's atmosphere, actually. There are bands where different things happen. Hmm. Now, Samantha, you had something going on in your jar, too. Let's give yours a spin. Yours is a little bit smaller. Hmm. So it's the same idea, but give it a spin. Again, oh, yeah, look at our bands. Ooh, all of a sudden, uh -huh. the clouds kicked up or the swirls kicked up. Now, if you keep going, it gets smooth. And then it gets kind of like stormy here. And then I get a stormy zone up there. So again, smooth band, stormy band. And you get these different bands of things happening. It's because of the spin. But <laughs> hopefully you don't get too sick by spinning around in circles because the next thing we have to do is in front of the table, we have a long board with two seats and two foam balls. And this is on a platform that spins. And you're going to sit each in one chair and throw a ball back and forth to each other while it's spinning. Uh. Now, if you do that, one of you is sitting on one side, one of you is sitting on the other. The platform's spinning, toss the ball back and forth. What might it look like? Well, if we throw it, we'll be on the other side, so it won't go straight. It will go not straight. It's going to it's gonna look. It's going to. It's going to look like it's going crooked. Yeah. What do you say we give that a try? Let's do it. Let's do it. Go. You know what you need to do. I'm going to start you gently spinning back and forth. You're going to toss this ball back and forth. Let's try it first, sitting still. So Sierra, go ahead and talk, toss the ball to Samantha. Nice, gentle, high toss. Oh, That's yeah. lovely. They're playing so well together. Oh. All right, now I'm going to get you spinning slowly in a circle. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and it looks like the ball is going in a curve, doesn't it? But the ball is not going in a curve. What's going in a curve? Us. Us. You two. Sierra, go ahead and give it a toss. Oh! oh I can't Samantha, move. your turn. Here you go. Dizzy. Go ahead and give it a toss. Oh! oh. <laughs> We're going to slow you down. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. And you folks are now masters of the Coriolis force. This is extremely important, this force. The way that spinning makes things curve is very, very important. There's hot at the equator. It's cold at the poles. Air would like to move from the equator to the poles, but there's a problem. It spins. And just as we've seen with these young ladies here, as the air masses are moving to the poles, they curve. 
And this is the crucial fact. The heating at the equator, the cold at the poles, and the spinning, and the forces that result from the spinning, those are the crucial facts that drive the global circulation. Now this is a bit hard to stimulate in the Channel 10 studio, although we have done our best. But there are folks in the Atmospheric Science Department at Colorado State University who have a great system that let us see just how these global circulation patterns develop.